Hey, it's Peter from The Mentors, and in today's episode, we won't do much coding, but I wanted to talk about something even more important, which is actually the understanding of why do we write the software this way or that way. And what I wanted to mention, what I want to talk about is sometimes this specific aspect, which especially affects the, let's say, junior developers, the junior software engineers, but not only. And that thing is relying too much on the technical documentation and treating the technical documentation, some kind of, let's say, an article related to the framework or some kind of library as a guidance to writing the well-encapsulated object-oriented software. Let's say, let's imagine this is a situation in which you are given a task to implement some specific project, let's say a web application. So for example, you are new to the ASP.NET Core, you look up some article like how to build an API with the ASP.NET Core, there is an article and you will find there like a plenty of useful articles, right? I mean, plenty of sections within this getting started article, how to build, let's say your first web API. All right, so as you will go along this article, you will find something like expose the get method, which will get the data, expose the post method, which will create the data and so on and so on. And even at this point, you might start wondering, I mean, so this actually works. I mean, if I copy and paste this code, this works, but why do I name these methods this way? Why do I use these different kinds of HTTP verbs? Why do I use these different kinds of headers of status codes, these different endpoints? I mean, is there some convention behind this? Because this article doesn't even mention this. And, you know, I just kind of take it for granted. That's how you write things. While in reality, what it does behind the scenes, it kind of implicitly applies some of the RESTful services conventions. But you might not be aware of it. But let's keep the conventions part. Let's focus on something much more important, the model. Within this article, you might some find something like the model, where by model, if you were to res refer, for example, to this MVC as model controller pattern, you would find that model is all about representing your business, your logic. It's what your web application interacts with to pretty much change the state of your application, right? As the time goes by. So you can see this model and it's great. I mean, the model can actually be already saved database. And you look up for another article, you find that this model, for example, uses the ND framework core, a great library to integrate the database, so-called ORM. You look up for another article, and again, there is the same model, the very similar sample. In this scenario, in the web API sample, let's say we implement the to-do item, in the EF core sample, we are implementing the block and blog post. But they look pretty much the same, just a kind of anemic class with a bunch of public getter setters, some kind of database context that can be easily provided for your constructor or anything else, depending on the type of application that you are working with. And it just works, right? And okay, you start writing your web API this way, but after some time, you will quickly realize that even by looking at this article, that when you get into the methods like create something or delete something or edit something, you have to perform a few checks. Like let's say compare the identifier, check if the item exists, try to save changes, try catch, and if there is an exception, do something. And maybe based on different inputs, you need to return the different, you need to produce the different outputs. So you can quickly realize that this might get messy, right, over the time. Once you will start adding more features to your app, this might get messy. And what if you would like to reuse 
some of the behaviors, maybe some of the validation, some of the input processing in different parts of your application, maybe in different controllers. Well, you might look for a book and that might help you with um, uh, design patterns and principles, maybe some kind of solid book, and you will find that there is something like single responsibility principle, which once again, probably wouldn't be even mentioned in this kind of article because the documentation is all about the technical guidance, how to make things work. It's not about giving you how to structure your solution, what is the clean architecture all about, and how to build the proper encapsulated domain models, right? It's all about getting, getting you started with the specific library, specific framework, showing you how to set up things easily, rather fast, and just how to make it work. But it's really up to you to understand how to get the best of the specific library or the framework. And if you just, let's say, assume that what you see in some kind of technical documentation sample for a specific library or ORM or framework or whatever you're using is how you should write your business code in most cases. And by most cases, I mean writing the actual commercial software when there's multiple developers or multiple teams working around this. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. So there is plenty of books and resources, videos, articles that might help you with understanding the OP in general, um, these design patterns and principles, or how to provide, let's say, these architecture, these layers, this clean hexagonal approach into your solution. But if you are, let's say, more on the beginning of your journey, if you are more like a junior or regular programmer that maybe have heard about some of these patterns, but maybe have even used them, but doesn't feel like you know all those things and what do they mean and why do we actually write things this way or that way. Um, in exactly 10 days, we'll have a solid web API course on our platform in which we'll be building this uh, web API with ASP.NET Core but more importantly, we'll be also focusing on this domain, this modeling, this solid principles and writing well encapsulated, well abstracted, tested, maintainable, maintainable code. So um, yeah, plenty of options to choose from. Just check the description, check our upcoming course. And yeah, see you in the next video in which hopefully We'll do some coding, but I felt like uh, it's important to mention this stuff because I've seen many times uh, during my career, not only the junior developers, but also the more experienced developers who would just take what they found on the internet in some kind of technical documentation on other samples, just did a copy and paste of this code. And you know, others would start, would start just doing the same. And after some time, the code would get a bit messy and the whole idea of understanding why we write this software and why we typically not always but in most cases when, whenever we work with something more complex we want this software to be more object oriented programming driven to, to put it uh, this way somehow it got lost along the way so that's it for today and uh, see you in the next episode cheers oh, 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 oh.